Hey, this is Teddy from Quixel. Today we'll have a first look at the new Quixel suite, starting with the workflow primer on the new Didu and 3Do. Let's start by opening up Didu. Next, I will load in a mesh and some input maps. Didu will automatically assign the maps to the correct slots based on the map names. Now, I'll have a look at my material ID links. And this basically lets me specify that the red colors of my color map are supposed to be plastics and the blue colors are supposed to be metals. I'm going to set this blue color here to become a black painted metal. And I'll turn this purple ID into a red PVC plastic. Lastly, I'll make these screws here into steel. Alright, I'm happy for now. Let's go ahead and accept. Now for this example, we're not going to be loading any presets. We'll start off with a clean slate instead. Let's have a look at which maps to generate. We'll add an ambient occlusion term. Dido supports quite a few maps by default, but we're going to stick with the most regular PBR ones. Okay, let's create. And here's our base. Let's open up 3Do. 3Do is a simple lightweight PBR previewer linked with Photoshop. And it works with all of Quixel's tools, and it also works with any type of project. Now let's set up some base textures. Now Didu ships with a bunch of material presets, and these are all based on Quixel Megascans textures. And what that means is that every pixel is 100% PBR scanned data. Let's go ahead and add a dirty painted metal. This metal is a multi-layered material, and the accumulation of dirt, scratches, rust, and so on, is completely dependent on the volume of your mesh as well as the characteristics of the scan data. Let's have a look at the dirt buildup and the material definition up close. Where the old Didu was built around algorithmic detailing and procedural texture effects, the new Didu allows for real-world material definition. Let's have a look at the different materials that we generated. Each material has three components, texture, mask, and reflectance. Now I want to change the reflectance of my painted layer. I'll desaturate the color a little bit. That's good. Let's check it out. Next, I'll add another material. This time, I'll add a black painted metal. Remember how we linked the color idea for this before? Let's double click and see what happens. Okay, so what exactly happened here? The material automatically masked itself to the correct area. And this is simply because we specified that our blue color in our color map was supposed to be a black painted metal. Sometimes when you work with high-res projects like this and you just want to define your base materials real quick, you can lower the preview resolution for a quicker workflow. There we go. Now there's a quicker way to add materials to any part of your mesh at any time. If I hold down the C key, this brings up my color view. And if I shift click, I'll be able to add any material for that part of the mesh. Okay, we're starting to get some more definition in here. Let's look at the maps quickly. Now every bit of this texture here is scanned, and what that means is that all of the map components, the albedo, gloss, specular, normal, AO, and so on, all have uniquely scanned values. I'm going to continue quickly adding a few more materials, starting with a grainy plastic for his neck. That seems to do the job. Let's add a fabric as well. Okay. And let's make this a plastic tube. I'll go back to previewing at full resolution. If I want to work with a preview full screen, I can set the UI to topmost. For this next material, I want to create something from scratch. And I'll create a red plastic with some plastic stress and some dirt on it. Now I'll click the Add Material button. And these are all raw scans from the Quixel Mega Scan service, and they're all bundled with Didu. Let's find a base plastic. Next, I'll go ahead and design some plastic stress. So I'll add a new clean layer. I'll rename this. And then I want this layer to color dodge the albedo, so I'll go ahead and set the blending mode to color dodge. Now let's look at creating a simple stress mask. This is our mask editor. And on the left, we have a few simple presets. Let's select one of them. Okay, our edges are now masked, so let's tweak the curvature of these edges. And I'll also blend the plastic texture with this mask. 
There we go. I'll also change the tint of this layer. Okay, I'm pretty happy with this. So I'll create my mask. Finally, I want to create a dust layer to blend with my material. Now I can't seem to find what I'm looking for, so I'll import one of my own materials. I will go on to quick load my maps. And here are the sand textures I want to use. They're looking fine, so I'll go ahead and create this. I'll save it in the D2 material library. Okay, and here we go. Now my material is a part of D2, and I can use it at any time for any project. So let's add it. It's a little chunky, so I'll downscale it a bit. That's better. Now I don't want this to look like sand, but I want it to be a dust. So I can right click on the reflectance button and select the quick PBR calibrated value for dust. Now let's create a dirt mask from scratch, based on AO and our newly imported sand texture. I can enter a mask only mode by clicking this button down here. Let's create the AO. Okay, I'm going to blur this out a little bit and increase the tightness. Some more blur. And I'll invert this. And then I'll add my texture. Increase the contrast. It's looking okay. A little bit too soft. So I'll increase the tightness. And the contrast. And that's good. Okay, the dust is a little bit strong, so I'll lower the opacity. That's better. Maybe just lower it a little bit more. Yeah, that's a lot better. Now I'm pretty much happy with my plastic, so I will group it. And I'll add a name. Now if I want to mask this to a specific area, I can right click the mask. And this will bring up a quick mask UI. And then if I hold the C key, it brings up my color view and I can just click anywhere and it'll mask itself to that specific area. And if I'm happy, I'll just go ahead and press done. Now you can press the one, two, three keys to review the different map components. Next, I'm pretty happy with this. So I'll save a preset. And that's a good name. Now this preset exists in Didu and I can use it at any time. And actually I'll use it right now. And I will apply it to uh, one of my other cables. This one here. Let's find the preset. There we go. And create. Okay. Let's enter the group. And I'll just find it in my albedo here. And I'll change the color, make it a blue. That's good. All right, we're pretty much done for this tutorial. Let's go ahead and create a nice presentation. So we'll just add a couple of post effects, some nice depth of field, a little bit of vignetting, noise, maybe some blue and contrast. Let's add some. A subtle lens dirt. And that's it. I'll uh, render a screenshot. Okay, let's just check it out. Okay, now I'm actually pretty happy with my results, so I'll save this as a preset. And I want to reuse this for many other assets. Uh, we can actually try that right now. So I'm gonna save this and, and close everything. Yep. And next, I'll uh, create a new project. So I'll load up a mesh courtesy of uh, Tor Frick. I'll load this color map here and I'll set the color IDs 
to the ones I set before. This one I want to be a black painted metal. And this I want to be a red wire. Okay, I'm done. I'll just load the rest of the maps. And I'll load the preset that we just created. Excellent. And create the base. And here we go. So now it's using the preset that we just created. And it has created a few different metals and the plastic that we uh, also included into our project. Let's check out the different maps. All right, that's it. Uh, thank you for watching. I uh, hope you had fun uh, learning about the new DDoO. See you next time.